Psalm 146 in its entirety. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not be feared, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof war and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a will, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she should not be moved. God shall help her in that right earth. The heathen rage, the kingdom were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God and take us our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolation he had made in the earth. He make a wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He break the bow, he cut the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. Amen. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We read to you Psalm 46 and the time. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. He's been good to me. I think all of us can say that. Some time or another, in our lifetime, we know we once was lost, but now we found. So thank God. And this time we are prepared to worship God in giving. So we ask that you make preparation at this time. If you need our Lord, raise your hand. If you have one, we'll give you a few minutes to uh, get your envelopes ready. This is the uh, first Sunday, the first Sunday in a new month. So praise God and let's prepare for giving. Thank you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this offering, dear Heavenly Father. We ask that you bless the giver. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, over this offering, dear Heavenly Father, for, for this storehouse, dear Heavenly Father. And then, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you uh, just watch over our choirs. We give thanks for the songs that were sung today. And now, with great anticipation, dear Heavenly Father, we look forward to the words that's going to be preached today. We ask that you continue to bless Pastor Walk in a mighty way. And we just give you all the thanks and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
I want you to be the subject of an examination. I want you to put yourself to the test to see if you are genuine, to see if your saving faith is a genuine faith, to see if your Christianity is genuine, to see if Jesus lives in your life. Yeah. Now, I don't mind the fact that, that you've checked me out and that you're trying to prove that the words I preach are not from Christ. That's all right if you declare me to be a reprobate, but, but I want you to find out something about yourself. So test your faith in faith. Mm. Examine yourself. Examine your life to see if Christ lives in you. Mm. Now this test, or this examination, is not to be from the outside in. All right. Because we can look pretty good on the outside mm. and still be pretty bad in the inside. Mm. So this test is not, not from the outside in. It is to be from the inside out. Amen. And in order to, to help us with this exam, I, I needed to do what I don't usually do. I needed to, to pull a, a few more scriptures from other parts of the, the New Testament to kind of give us a few markers to look for as we do this self-examination. So I want to talk about some markers of the faith. The true, true, genuine, saving faith is marked by penitence. Jesus taught in the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit. True saving faith causes an overwhelming sense of sinfulness in our lives, which causes us to mourn over our sinfulness. Causes us to be sad about our sinfulness. Causes us to be unhappy about our, our sinfulness. So much so that, that, that we will be humble and, and we will confess our sin. That's, that's, what, that's what David said. I, I acknowledge my sin yeah, yeah. and my transgression. I, I have not hidden anything from you, Lord. And so one mark of true faith and faith, one mark of authentic salvation is that our sinfulness will cause us to, to mourn, cause us to be humble, and cause us to confess. Uh, one man told his pastor, he said, Rev, I, I do all right with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> but it's that eleventh one <laughs> that gives me trouble. <laughs> And the pastor kind of scratched his head and he said, now which one is the eleventh one? He said, that one that says, know ye your sins will find you out. <laughs> and what he is saying is that my sins have got me messed up. My sins have got me so miserable, I don't know what to do with myself. And it's a sign of genuine faith when that, that commandment have us all messed up. And then another marker of genuine faith is a desire for righteousness. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now, it is one thing to avert sin, but that, that's not enough. True faith is attracted to righteousness. It is good to, to avert sin, but, but a true believer wants to be righteous 
means that you are an authentic Christian. If you pass, it means that you are a genuine Christian. If you fail, it means that you are reprobate. It means that you are a cheat. It means that you are a fake. But Paul felt like most of them had passed the test. And so after asking them that question, he goes on to pray for them. Paul says that I pray that you do no evil, but only that which is right. And he prays for the Christians to do that which is right. Because the, the outside world was looking at the Christians. Correct was a, was a wicked place. And the only hope for correct was what was going on in the little church in Corinth. And Paul said, I'm praying, I'm praying for you Christians to don't do any evil. I'm praying for you to do that which is right. Because this outside world in Corinthians need a light. And the only light they have is God's church. And my brothers and sisters, the only light that this world we live in have is God's church. But the only way God's church can be that light is that God's people will have to be that light. Oh, 
they must see Christians yeah. that will do good yeah. for those that hate us. Yeah. Do good for those that rebel against us. Yeah. Do good for those that they claim is nothing to us like they did Paul. Paul said, that's all right if you call me a reprobate. Yeah. Just as long as you do good yeah. to those that hate you. Yeah. So the outside world will come crying and yeah. say, what? Hey, what? What must I do? Well, you might ask the question. Mm -hmm. What happens if I fail to exist? Mm -hmm. Paul says, if you fail mm -hmm. to see Christ in your life, uh -huh. but yet you profess him, but you fail to take him, he says, that means you're a reprobate. That means you're fake. That means you're false. But the good news is, yeah. Jesus died for you. The good news is, Jesus wants to save you. The good news is, Jesus will take you in just as you are.
obedience to our Almighty God, Reverend Walker, members of Mount Calvary, family and friends. Good morning. Good morning. It's always a blessing to be with you Sunday morning. Today's sermon will be posted on YouTube and Facebook Live today at or before 1 p.m. Our Finance Security Committee will be at the church today from 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. to receive your financial gifts. We will have in-person Sunday school today at 9.15 a.m. for adults and children. And worship 2 will begin today at 10.50 a.m. And please be reminded that we will have the Lord's Supper today in person and by conference call starting at 5 p.m. If you plan to take the Lord's Supper by conference call, you can pick up your wafer and juice set this morning here at the Lord's Supper table. The women's ministry will meet on Monday night at 6 p.m. in person and by conference call. The men's meeting will be on Monday night at 7 p.m. in person. On Tuesday, we will have our Early Rises prayer conference call at 7.30 a.m. led by Sister Mary Brown and Sister Freda Bob. On Tuesday at 5.30 p.m., members of the Special Programs Committee will meet in person in the Fellowship Hall. Mm -hmm. Sister Mona Williams is the chairperson mm -hmm. for this committee, and the goal of this committee is to oversee make recommendations, and provide ideas for our annual programs. And the first program that's coming up is the pastor's anniversary, and that will be in April. Also on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., the Young Adult Mission will meet by conference call at 6.30 p.m. On Wednesday at 5 p.m., and again on Thursday at 7 p.m., there will be a combined choir rehearsal for singers of the 1050 AM choir, the Sanctuary Choir, and the Youth 13 and Older Choir. That is a combined choir rehearsal for all of those choirs. That's on Wednesday and Thursday. Also on Wednesday at 6 p.m. we will have Bible study in person and by conference call. On Thursday, March the 7th at 7 p.m., we will have an evening prayer conference call with Deacon Don Rouse. And since this is Thursday, this is just a reminder that those combined choirs will have rehearsal on Wednesday at 5 p.m. and again on Thursday at 7 p.m. Next Sunday, March the 10th, we will have our regular schedule of services. Sunday worship at 8 a.m. in person and conference call. Sunday school at 9.15 a.m. in person and worship to at 10.50 a.m. Now this is a message that I gave to you last week, but I'm giving to you again. Mount Calvary will be in service with Pastor Robert Walker and the Starlight Baptist Church on the second Sunday in March. That's March the 10th. That's next Sunday at 3.30 p.m. for the pastor's installation service. Our combined choirs are asked to sing. So I guess that's why Sister Linda Mount asked that we have choir practice on Wednesday and Thursday because those choirs will sing next Sunday. Amen. And Starlight Baptist Church is located at 1090 Beaufort Street here in Beaumont, Texas. Mount Cabaret received a beautiful thank you card. It says, you make a difference. Isn't that a blessing? Sometimes you just Amen. never know how you're touching people's lives until you get a beautiful card like this. And it says, thank y'all so very much from the bottom of my heart for all the love. And it says, you've got a real way with people. You give your best and help others to be their best. Amen. That makes the people around you feel pretty lucky and very grateful. Thanks for doing what you do so well. And it says, love always, Deborah Green. Those are your announcements for today. Thank you. Good. 